Hello everyone, my name is JB. I, I am a technical leader in a data team, and today I'm going to talk about unlocking the power of what-if analysis, which is a technique with TypeI. TypeI is a new Python library which has been released last year, and with TypeI you can build interactive dashboards. It is one of the few libraries featuring both front-end as well as back-end features, and we will come back to that later. I propose we go over, we discover what if analysis in four parts. Uh, in the first part that I untitled hard-coded filters, we will see anti-patterns, so stuff you should avoid to do. And then from here, we will iterate towards more and more advanced patterns uh, until we use TypeI at its full potential. Hard-coded filters. So I would like to start this talk with a story. This uh, story happened to me last year. I actually had to build a BI dashboard, and this dashboard had to be built with Looker, which is a, a BI dashboarding tool in the uh, Google Cloud ecosystem. The goal of this dashboard was to expose analytics KPIs uh, for a SaaS. KPIs such as, uh, for example, the number of sessions opened per user per day or the total uh, duration of user sessions, stuff like this, so analytics. And the dashboard was, uh, the, the data looked like this. The data was uh, stored in BigQuery, uh, and there was a huge <laughs> pile of data which was clustered by customer, so you would have a lot of data about customer one, a lot of data about customer two, and the company had a lot of customers. Users play an important role in our story because we, as developers, we always need to remember that what we build is uh, for them first, and this is what should um, lead the features that we are uh, releasing. To build this dashboard, we first went with a first mockup. Um, this mockup worked like this. So first, you had a customer selector. Uh, so you would select customer one, customer two, customer whatever. And then you would have uh, KPIs about this customer, um, like this. You would also have another column with the same KPIs uh, aligned, but this time for a customer group related to the first customer. So the data was aggregated at a group level, and then you would have also other columns with other groups of customers related to this one. When you think about user experience, uh, there are several things that can be improved on this uh, version, but the one that I would like to highlight the most is that uh, we are dealing with hard-coded use cases, um, and by that I mean that those customer groups are forced uh, which might lead to user frustration because uh, it will prevent them to, like, you, you're kind of forcing them to use the tool the way you wanted uh, them to use, and not the way, you're not, you're not allowing them to use the tool they, the way they would like have to um, preferred. And usually when uh, programming, you want to avoid hard coding stuff. So, um, so yeah, but it's a story, so I hope uh, you guys want a happy ending. So let's make this happen. Let's make this happen uh, thanks to uh, the scenario A versus scenario B approach. What the release dashboard looked like was something like this. Uh, so first we have visual KPIs, cool. But uh, most importantly, what we have is uh, two groups of customers that are dynamically um, set thanks to uh, those filters. And this way, you can um, configure the orange group here, the blue group here, and have a direct comparison between the two um, in, your, uh, in your plot. So yeah, you, you, by opposition with hard-coded filters, here you have an infinite amount of use cases. You can compare one customer with a lot of customers. You can compare a group within, between a group, and uh, stuff like this. When we released this dashboard, users were very happy because this uh, pattern, this way of presenting stuff, uh, was actually very 
um, ergonomic uh, because the users could dig into data um, in a way they could not before, and they could really uh, compare uh, customer performances. It's a cool story, but the title of the, of the talk was about what if analysis. So what's the connection? Um, well, I'm coming to it. Uh, but first, I need to introduce uh, the concept of scenarios. What is a scenario? A scenario is a set of input parameters. Uh, when you set those input parameters, you get an output, which is, in our case, a line. And when you change input parameters, you get another output. It's another scenario, and so on, and so on. It's simple. But um, on what if analysis is the process of iterating this way by changing input parameters and trying to figure out uh, what your data, data uh, can reveal on your customers. This actually might look simple, but um, actually it's, it is what, what uh, made um, users happy when I think about it um, uh, one year after. Like when I released uh, this, uh, when we re released this dashboard, I was not aware of the concept of what if analysis, of the concept of scenarios, but now I think that uh, this is pretty much related to to it. Um, and if we want to go deeper on the definition of what if analysis uh, we can ask ChatGPT for instance which uh, we will ha with, we will have um, an extensive definition um, in this definition what interests me is that uh, the conclusion is that what if analysis is a structured approach to exploring your data or your data sets uh, then ChatGPT adds some keywords such as scenario, which is important, uh, input variables, assessing the impact, um, decision makers gaining insights, which is what makes users happy because they gain a lot of insights about your data this way. Um, what do we have? Uh, yeah, so specialized software such as TypeI. You can also use spreadsheets, even if it's less uh, ergonomic, to simulate your scenarios. Then uh, ChatGPT also uh, gives us uh, examples of some industries that can benefit from it, such as uh, financial planning or supply chain management. But actually, as long as you have data, you are able to perform what if analysis on it. Um, and this includes machine learning if you consider your features as input parameters. Okay, so now we know what what if analysis is how to unlock its uh, power. So this is what I just explained. This is performing motif analysis. That, on the other hand, feels more like unlocking the power of it. Why? Because uh, in this case, we are stacking multiple scenarios on one plot. Uh, so this allows us to compare things, uh, to, to make more visual comparisons, to get a more visual sense of our data. Just to make sure we understand the um, importance of stacking your scenarios on one plot, uh, let's have a look at um, this case where we have isolated scenarios. First, so, so like you, you can perform what if analysis with uh, isolated scenarios like this, but what you will have to do if you want to compare your data is you have to open one tab and then another tab and set some parameters and switch between tabs. So it's not really user-centric. Um, you will also have to work with different scales, um, which can prevent you to have a visual sense of your data. And this is especially um, uh, important because uh, usually BI tools set the scale automatically, and sometimes you don't have control over it. So it's not, um, it's not the best. What you will also have difficulties is uh, figuring out correlations between your scenarios. Like, again, yes, you can do by switching between your tabs, but, um, but yeah, it, it's, it's less um, uh, optimal. This is not something that I am inventing. This is based on user feedback. Um, I said they, they were not happy. They are less happy if you do this. They are still happy, but... Um, 
Yes, so they, they made the feedback about that, and this is why we ended up with this uh, version. This is what was deployed with a scenario A versus scenario B approach. I actually uh, had the opportunity to reach those uh, users uh, two weeks ago, and they are still using this dashboard, so they didn't change the, the structure, so they are still happy about it. That being said, um, there is a, there is a trade-off. Like, if you want to stack multiple scenarios on one plot like this, uh, you will have difficulties implementing it with uh, uh, mainstream BI tools. I had to implement it with Looker. I managed to do it, but it felt like hacking the tool to achieve this result. Um, actually, I had to write hundreds of lines of SQL in order to be able to have this result thanks to the help of derived tables, for those who know. Um, in Looker, you're, you're not supposed to write SQL, you're more supposed to write LookML. So yeah, like this was not really uh, easy to implement with the mainstream tool. And the, the thing about it is that it puts pressure on the development team because uh, yeah, maintenance will be hard to achieve especially because uh, this is 100 li of lines of SQL per KPI, and we had 30 KPIs. KPIs were uh, still uh, getting added, so like it's, it becomes uh, a huge patch of uh, SQL that you have to maintain. What about Power BI? Can we achieve this in Power BI? I don't think you can, but even if you could, you, you would have to hack the tool as well to achieve this result and you will have to maintain it uh, the hard way. So we are in this situation where on one side we have users that are happy about a feature, developers that are less happy about the situation, and I am here in the middle trying to figure out if, uh, if there is something we can do. It would be so cool if you had a tool to be able to perform this, um, and guess what, that tool actually exists. Uh, it is named TypeI, and I have a small demo for you. Um, oh, here we go, TypeI. I have a small demo for you. Uh, in this demo, I will showcase TypeI's native scenarios, because, ty because with TypeI you can have native scenarios. This is the only uh, library with which you can do this, as far as I know. In this demo, I also have two input parameters, like in my uh, drawings. So what I will do is I will uh, add, add a scenario like this. Uh, details don't really matter. Like I just name the scenario. And there I have a, a sign function, which is quite simple. But um, what is interesting is that if I do this, OK. Oh, I'm getting insights. <laughs> about my data. OK, so what if I add another scenario to compare? So I'm adding another scenario. OK. What if I change the amplitude? Oh, I see. I understand better the sign function now. Let's add a third scenario just, to, just for the fun. Uh, and that's it. We have three scenarios. What if I do that? I see. What if I do this? Hmm. So yeah, that's me performing what if analysis with a simple sign function. Of course, this is a demo, but I hope you can relate to your uh, business cases. And this application, this type of application, is about 80 lines of Python, which is quite short uh, for the feature that it uh, highlights. Uh, we will have a look at the application in a moment. But first, let's come back to our presentation. So thank you, TaiPai. Introducing TaiPai, what is TaiPai? So TaiPai, just to recap, is a Python-powered library with which you can build interactive dashboards. The library is open source. And if you are a company, you might be interested in enterprise paid features. The library uh, features native scenarios with which you can build what-if analysis use cases on top of it. You can also build other use cases, 
but here we are focusing mainly on motif analysis. And uh, again, like this is the only library in the that I know which allows you to do this. Another key aspect about TypeI is that you are able to uh, write MVP code and put that code to production fast. You can um, turn that MVP to production-grade software uh, thanks to the library, which is a, actually a cool thing because uh, Gartner reports that 85% of Python pilots actually fail to go to production. Um, who knew about that? Raise your hand if you knew about that. Okay, no one? Yeah, so, oh, <laughs> one person. This is a taboo in our community. Um, and yeah, like uh, nobody talks about it. But it's real, and TypeI is aware of that. So this is why the, um, the library has been designed to offer you the ability to write MVP applications. And then it has also the features that allow you to uh, turn them to production grade. Uh, to a production grade code base. How does the application, uh, how does the library uh, achieve this? Well, first, what you build is web applications from the start, featuring a low code syntax. And something I didn't mention yet is that uh, TypeI features user management, because once you want to go to production, you usually have these cases such as. I want my users to see only that. I want other users to see this and to be able to perform that action. This kind of use cases. And this is what you will be able to do with uh, TypeI thanks to its uh, user management features. Both uh, native scenarios and user management um, are backend features, which might sound odd at the, first, um, at the first look when you think about a dashboarding library. But um, I hope you understand better the interest of having uh, backend features. And this actually is a competitive advantage of TypeI compared to other uh, library uh, data visualization libraries, uh, which you can find a lot uh, these days. I would also, also like to show you the code of uh, the demo that I just showed you. So this demo. Uh, this is the code of that demo that you can see here. I hope it's big enough. Uh, what do we have? We have some backend code, which is not very interesting to describe here. This is mainly glue code, which uh, sets parameters to the appropriate scenarios. OK, cool. Um, we have this state here, which is specific to TypeI. I will not be able to cover everything due to uh, time constraints, but uh, what you also have is um, scenario-related uh, functions, so get scenarios, uh, set this value for this scenario, and this kind of stuff. Um, and then what you also have is uh, this, and this part is the front-end part. When you're writing a front-end in TypeI, you will basically have two options. You can write either HTML or Markdown. I used Markdown here because it was uh, easier to get started. Um, so this is native Markdown. And that, actually, it's extended Markdown because those tags are not um, standard Markdown tags. Those are TypeI specific tags. What this line means, with this line, only one line, you get this whole component here, which uh, allows you to manipulate your scenarios, like create, update, stuff like this, uh, read. Um, on this line, how does it work? Well, you have a selected scenario variable, which is updated each time you select a new scenario. This is the name of the component. And that is a simple uh, callback. So when things happen in the component, the callback is called so that you can handle the changes. All TypeI components work like this. So you have a variable with which you can um, get you the value. You have the component itself, such as the slider here. And then a callback so that you can react to uh, everything happening on, the, on this comp component. There is uh, something else. There is this uh, configuration part. 
in order so in order to for this application to work, we need to give it a configuration. We need to tell TypePy how how do how um, our scenarios are uh, wired under the hood. So this is what uh, I do here by loading this TOML configuration file, which is, uh, which is this file. I'm just showing it to you for the record, but TypeEyes documentation recommends you not to uh, update this file, this file manually. Instead, you have a nice uh, VS Code plugin with which you can with which you can um, see the configuration in a visual way. And what this basically means is that you have two input parameters that we map to our variables. We have a Python function, which is uh, mapped to this component here, this function. And then we have a data frame as an output. This here, I will not cover, but it basically says that this is our entry point because this is a demo, this is a small use case. Of course, when you write a, a production um, uh, DAG, then you will have a lot more um, data nodes as well as uh, tasks. Um, and yeah, so if you happen to use TypeI in production, uh, you might have uh, variables, such as I am using here, as well as uh, CSV files, SQL queries, um, data sets, and everything you can imagine as data. So that's it for the code. Let's go back to the presentation. So if we, so this <laughs> this slide, I copy pasted a, a graph that TypeI um, has produced in other talks. And uh, the key idea of this graph is that TypeI is in a sweet spot because uh, you get a lot of features while having a low learning curve. On the other hand, you have, also, you, have, you have other popular libraries such as Plotly with which you can have a lot of features but uh, the learning curve is quite high. And if you happen to use Streamlit in production, you might be aware that uh, yeah, it's, it, you can get started uh, easily, but then you don't scale, you are not able to scale in production, and you cannot benefit from back-end features such as uh, native scenarios or user management. So let's recap. We have seen that hard coding your uh, use cases are might be not the way to go. Then we have seen that what-if analysis is uh, more user-centric that you can uh, implement with tools like Looker, Power BI, Streamlit, which are popular. We have also seen the limits of um, having only one scenario per plot. This is where TypeI comes to play, and we can, thanks to native scenarios, thanks to native scenarios, we are able to um, implement uh, this. We can implement stacking multiple scenarios on one plot way, way more easily. And this actually, like stacking multiple scenarios on one uh, plot, is my favorite uh, type I feature um, that you can build upon uh, native scenarios. Now that we know what type I is, that we understand more what it does, uh, we can have a look at uh, advanced type I features. And those features I would like to introduce with a concrete example the example of McDonald's, which, is, uh, uh, which uses uh, TypeI for one of their use cases. This use case is that every week, each single McDonald's point of sale must, must publish a forecast of revenues. How do we achieve this? Forecasting revenues, well, we can uh, do it thanks to what-if analysis, uh, thanks to native scenarios. Then uh, you might want to publish your executions so that everyone is aware in the company. And it's cool because TypeI has a nice scenario registry feature that we have seen in the, in the demo. And since we are dealing with a, a use case based on recurrence, um, so every week, every month, every whatever you want, uh, then TypeI has a cycles feature that um, allows you to um, take advantage of uh, this um, of this uh, recurring uh, need to compute your scenarios. 
Of course, this uh, McDonald's application is a living application. It evolves over time, so um, uh, you might get interested in versioning your, um, your scenarios, your executions, because everybody is talking about versioning code, versioning models, but nobody is talking about versioning executions. Of course, uh, all those um, features are completely optional. You can only work uh, with TypePy on the front-end part or only with native scenarios if you want. I actually uh, don't expect you to remember all of those uh, by tomorrow. But the key idea, what, I, what you will remember, is that once you have uh, native scenarios, you can build uh, features on top of it and benefit from it thanks to TypePy. So if, uh, this, uh, if um, using native scenarios to perform motif analysis is performing motif analysis, combining all of, this, uh, all of those features all together uh, for this use case feels more like unlocking the power of it. So that's it. Uh, you can find the live demo that I like the demo that I showed you uh, on my computer, you can find it live uh, in, on TypePy Cloud, which is currently in beta and which will have, which will have uh, free tiers to deploy TypePy applications. The code that I used is available on GitHub here. And if, like me, you think that TypePy has a role to play in the future of uh, data, well, please add a star on GitHub. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your uh, talk. We have uh, uh, around three minutes for uh, some questions, if you have. Uh, just please uh, check, uh, use the microphones. I will put mine there, too. No one? OK. Uh, you, you can find uh, Jean Baptiste in uh, Code Space or in Discord, so you can ask them, uh, him there uh, any questions that you have. Uh, thanks again. Uh, great talk.